Hello, President and Founder of the High Speed Rail America Club. We're starting a new series to try to get out more thoughts and more information out there. We're calling this Off the Rails, where I pretty much go in a blogging setting with minimal editing and any annotations, any sources will be put in the description or in annotations later on in post-process in the video. And I pretty much explain what's going on in the transportation industry and high speed rail and etc. etc. Pretty much anything related to high speed rail to transportation, mass transportation, anything like that. And for this episode, we're going to focus on the Hyperloop. Yes, we're going there. Uh, last week, Hyperloop 1 released a test where they showed pretty much a magnetic catapult. That's basically it, but hey, you put the buzzword Hyperloop in any title and it's going to get a whole lot of views. That's how the media works these days. So, of course, they put out, like I said, a video. I'll put up the, like, the link in the description below also too as well. Probably in the video, you can click somewhere in the video, probably over here to be able to see the video also too as well so you can be able to see it the magnetic catapult in your own eyes it's not really a hyperloop it's pretty much a mag a sled on rails being pushed by a magnet oh and slowed by sand we're, we're really moving places guys uh so pretty much yeah it's it has a pretty extremely fast acceleration it's supposed to show the propulsion system that would be put in the hyperloop and there's like I said, there's a lot of Hyperloop companies now coming out, which is going to add to the confusion of all the technology going around. Uh, you have Hyperloop Transportation Technologies being run by Dick Alborn. Uh, I, I, that's, that's his name. Uh, you have Hyperloop One, which is being run by a former SpaceX employee, which is the one that put out the Hyperloop uh, test video last week, the pretty much the magnetic catapult. And you also have MIT that put out the pod design also too as well. And according to this, you also have SpaceX that's working on some Hyperloop technologies as well. And remember, all these companies are based here in the United States. They're not based in China, nor Japan, nor Europe. No, they're all based here, which pretty much says two things. Number one, the good thing. Let's start with the good. We're trying to fix something. We're thinking of fixing something, okay? We're, we know that our infrastructure is messed up. We're trying to fix it. All right. Good. Number two, we have the wrong thing that we're trying, the wrong solution to try to fix it. While we know other countries already have something fixed, we're trying to go to something completely out of there, uh, right, right out of there. And like I said, Elon Musk, uh, I mentioned this also in the other Hyperloop video. If you want to see the best Hyperloop video on YouTube with nice editing, nice music, nice setting, and also a hockey table so you can see actually how it's supposed to work in theory. Uh, click here in the description. We also have the annotation that's going to be coming up right here for our own video to explaining how the Hyperloop works and some comparisons also to how other technologies also to as well. So, like I said, uh, that's that's pretty much what they what they tested out. And the main thing that I saw in this that really piqued my interest was that there were other companies that were investing into Hyperloop One mainly rail companies. Now, I looked at these rail companies, this French and SNCF. You're all, all familiar with SNCF. They're the people who run the TGV, the Train Gun Vitesse, which is France's high-speed rail. And also Deutsche Bahn, DB, which is the German national rail system who also runs uh, the ICE, the Intercity Express, which is Germany's high-speed rail system. So why would they be investing into Hyperloop 1? And I have a theory about this, which is a real business-based theory, which really does happen. Uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of Motorola. This is the Motorola phone, the Motorola Moto X, which was developed by Google, who used to own Motorola just a few years ago. Uh, this, was, this, phone, this phone was done in 2013. Now, Motorola, a couple years before that, was doing poorly. They were filing for bankruptcy. They had to split the companies into two. They had to split... Uh, Motorola into the cell phone business and Motorola into the commercial business. So here's the cell phone business was bought out by Google. And Google developed a couple Motorola products. Uh, their main one was the Moto X. They developed that technology and then they sold Motorola really quickly. The company was doing a little bit better but they sold it, they sold it out. And the main reason why was because they wanted to get the patents out of Motorola. You see where I'm getting here? So Mo Google took Motorola they took what they could out of Motorola, all the intellectual property, any patents they had, and then they threw it out. Lenovo bought 
Motorola, and it's doing you know, just, just fine also too as well. But that's what companies also do, what investment companies sometimes do, similar investment companies. They invest into projects to see whatever they make to be able to take the technology. Once the company fails or doesn't do so well, or doesn't really do as well as expected, to be able to take the company and vulturize it and to make that, that technology to be able to apply to their own technology. Right now you have the German companies working on Maglev, which they've been far ahead with Maglev, and the French companies may also be looking at it to develop their own Maglev technology, because that's the main thing that's coming out of the Hyperloop, is going to be the Maglev technology coming out of it. Uh, as we sometimes, uh, as okay, well, as mentioned in the article also too, as well, the same article from Gizmodo, MIT developed a Hyperloop pod that would not run on air skis. Remember, if you saw the Hyperloop video that we did, according to Elon Musk's Hyperloop Alpha, the Hyperloop pod would run on air skis, which means the air skis would lift the pod up to be able to have less friction on the tube and to be able to push it forward through the use of magnet propulsion. Now they're changing it into wheels, which kind of defeats the purpose of having frictionless movement within the tube. So the, tube, the pod is not going to go as fast as 760 miles an hour with that as originally theorized. And Elon Musk is okay with that. He himself also said that, well, 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 I'm good with wheels. That's how Elon Musk speaks, so don't, don't hate me for that. And speaking of hate, like I said, I don't care about the haters that are going to be coming on this video. I really don't care at all. I mean, I did, we did a video of Donald Trump's wall and the bullet train that he may be putting on the wall. We didn't get hate at all in that video. We put a video about the top five misconceptions of all aboard Florida, and we still got positive reaction to it, mostly positive reaction. We got a lot of negative reaction also, too, from the folks up in the Treasure Coast. There is nothing that you hype loopers can't do, or any people from the ET3 also, too. I'm not even going to talk about ET3 at all that much. This is the only time I'm going to mention it, uh, evacuated tube technologies. And I know some of them are on the Facebook group, too, as well. You guys haven't done anything, okay? You're, you guys are on Facebook all day. You haven't made anything. I love to show them pictures of All Aboard Florida actually working on the tracks. It really gets them butt hurt. But, like I said, they're, they're not moving and Hyperloop is actually moving forward. They can say all they want and compare it to a boss. Oh, we're, 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 the, real, we're the real Hyperloop. It doesn't matter. Because I'm going to explain why the Hyperloop isn't going to do as well as it could. And the main reasons are going to be, well, yeah, the science checks out. Okay, and this is someone who's in business and bis as business major. I used to be also a mechanical engineering major, and I can speak about it because yes, I got an A in physics, with calculus and calculus too, an A in both of them. Okay, so basically to understand the hyperloop, you have to have a basic understanding of kinematics, of electromagnetism, and aerodynamics. It's not that hard at all whatsoever. It's, it's hard for a lot of normal people because when you ask them about how the hyperloop works, when they mention it to you, they're they're kind of done step. So, the main problem I see with this is going to be the infrastructure relativity with other infrastructure. Now, you already have rail. Rail, all you have to do to convert regular rail into high-speed rail, straight, strengthen the tracks, add catenaries. Sometimes you can just do what all aboard Florida is doing. They're doing their own, they're improving the tracks, and they're putting high speed, higher speed diesel trains. That's it. That's all they have to do. It's the cheapest way to be able to make it and the most cost-effective way to be able to move people as fast as possible. The most amount of people. Now, the Hyperloop has to have a brand new way to move people. And freight. They have to make these tubes. These super expensive... I'm not going to say super expensive because, again, we don't know the price of how this is going to go. We only know speculation of it. But let me show you something here with Elon Musk's Hyperloop Alpha, which, I yes, I did read all 57 pages of it. Uh, a lot of people don't read much of it. A lot of people don't read at all today. <laughs> Let's just get that out there. All right. So here it is. This is how the tracks would have to look like. Now, let me see. Wait. Oh, no. Something went wrong here. What a great way to do it. Okay, here we are. Now the table of content is in the way. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right. Here we are. Like I said, this is minimal editing, guys. We're just we're just cooking this right here and right now. You got to take it raw. Uh, okay, so here is what it's going to look like, and notice the circles. Okay, the turns have to have 
a very certain radii in order to make sure that the, two, the pods reach their speed that they're trying to go for. Because if not, if they follow an existing right of way, that means that the tubes are not going to go as fast and they'll have to stop and go really fast in order to make sure that they don't, you know, <coughs> have the turns uh, or anybody in the, in, the, in the pods be able to be flipping out. Because the only thing that's going to be going hyper in those tubes is going to be your gastrointestinal systems. That's the only thing that's going to be looping really hyper. Because of this, they're going to have to either slow down the pods or they can do, if they want to go, be able to go 700, 760 miles an hour, they're going to have to dig through massive amount of, of mountains. A massive amount of other real estate that's already there. They're going to go to a city commission and say, yeah, there's only one way we can build this. Or there's only a very few ways that we can already build this and allocate where we're going to have the tubes to be able to run on. And a lot of people are going to be happy with that. People already are not happy with what uh, the California high-speed rail system that they're still trying to figure out how they're going to tunnel through or where they're going to tunnel through the San Gabriel Mountains. So imagine the amount of anger that's going to be coming out through the Hyperloop, just you know, going to communities and saying, well, we're going to have to go through these houses. There's no other way we can be able to turn out a little bit faster or else we, you know, mess up the whole integrity of our own whole system. So that's, that's where they're going with this. That's going to be the big problem, is finding where they're going to be able to build this. Because as of right now, there's only one place that really wants this built, and that's Slovenia. Or doesn't really want it built. They're thinking of having a partnership with the Hyperloop technologies in order to build a Hyperloop prototype in one of their cities. Like, that's going to move anywhere. Remember, well, it's still it's still going on. There's a company called Skytran. Uh, it's PRT, which is, stands for Personal Rapid Transit. And if you want to know where your government money is going, it's going to this because this is a NASA-funded project by uh, a company. So Skytran is pretty much... Uh, and under rail, personal rapid transit, the, li the little tubes, they're pretty much little tube trains that run on top. It's like a Disney ride, but an upside down monorail. That you go into a station, you go into one of the tubes, you press the button to go where you want to go, it takes you, and you get off. That's pretty much a train, right? But you'll have to build a whole new entire infrastructure for this, you know, proprietary technology that's just, well, you know... It's just an amusement ride, pretty much, more or less. And it's not really going anywhere in where they were saying they were going to build it in Tel Aviv. Not really much of anything coming out of there. So that's going to be one big problem is going to be real estate. Okay, because drilling up through mountains to be able to make sure that the infrastructural integrity of the system stays, it's going to cost sevenfold more than what it would cost already to build high-speed road, which you could easily be able to divert the tracks another way. Trains could be able to train... Uh, turn a lot faster than the Hyperloop would be able to do. And also Maglips can turn a little bit faster. Well, not turn a little bit fast. well, a little bit faster than the Hyperloop, not as fast as high-speed rail can. They can't do a tighter turn than regular conventional high-speed rail. And speaking of, that's what's going to really hit Hyperloop. It's going to be the competition from already established companies like Maglip, like high-speed rail. We've already seen the Shinkansen uh, SC Maglip in Japan already breaking its speed records over and over again. It's already reached 375 miles an hour. Give it another 10 years, it's going to be reaching close to more over 400. I'm giving it the benefit of doubt. More than 400 already. And then you have, the other thing also too is you have already steel wheel trains can already reach those speeds also too as well. You had the French TGV that did their own speeds of going over 350, 360 miles an hour also too as well. So the capabilities for steel wheel trains are still going out there. And then the biggest thing also too for the Hyperloop is going to be the competition of how much people can it move comfortably within an amount of time. According to Elon Musk's Hyperloop Alpha, they can move about 760 people per hour. Okay, and let, let's, let's, let's move that a little bit more. Let's say they can move 900 people an hour. Right? Okay. Actually, let's, let's move a little bit more. Let's say they can move 1,000 people per hour. One Shinkansen train, one N700 Shinkansen train from Japan can move 1,200 people per train. And those trains go every five minutes. So Shinkansen can actually move a ton more people than the Hyperloop. 
So that's that's where it's going to go in competition. When Hyperloop starts getting their act together, they start getting the stuff together, they say, great, the technology works, and they have the test track, and they've, you know, they've moved it through all in all, and they've been able to showcase it off. Then they go to the governments in order to procure land. And they're sitting right next to there with high-speed rail companies that have already been established that can show hardcore numbers of how these things actually work, of how they've been able to move people, of how the real estate's been able to be procured. They're not going to have any sort of data in order to do that. There's going to be very few municipalities that are going to be, if any, that are going to approve such a Hyperloop project. That's going to be the main source of competition, where it's not going to do well at all whatsoever. And like I said, that's going to be the biggest challenge. Of course, there's two solutions. The first solution, there's two solutions. The first solution is going to be supersonic technology. And there's a lot of reasons why we don't have super technology now when we used to have it, uh, mainly being noise uh, pollution, which is not that big of a deal. Uh, or actually noise, because the military runs supersonic jets all the time over land. That's just one thing you have to change is just the law. And I'm sure most people would be able to get over that also too as well. And, be able, and besides, to be able to fly a supersonic jet from San Francisco to L.A. is very simple. You go over the ocean, you go supersonic over the ocean, then once you approach uh, L.A. or San Francisco, you slow down uh, be, uh, below supersonic speeds and be able to go into an airport. And you already have the infrastructure already set up. It's very simple. You don't have to go and now do if you want to go 760 miles an hour. Okay, and again, probably supersonic jets are going to move just about as many people as a Hyperloop would. High speed rail, of course, is a higher capacity amount that you can move. And the second biggest uh, solution to this is Elon Musk's own SpaceX. You see people into space and you have a rocket that can be able to land back again. There you go. That's a simple way to go from point A to point B as quick as you want without that much uh, building infrastructure. Okay, and that's again, that's the fastest way if you want to get from point A to point B. High speed rail covers a mileage between anything between 200 to 700 miles. That's where its main marketable points are. We're not trying to go cross country with high speed rail or around the world with high speed rail because that's ridiculous to be able to go around the world with high speed rail. If I want to go from New York to Beijing, I take a plane. I'm not going to take the high speed rail trip all the way across the country, all through Alaska, all the way down to Beijing, because it would, you know, it's going to take a while, and I want to get to Beijing a little bit faster than that. So that's, you know, a little bit of reality in there. And I hope I brought a little bit of reality also, too, as well, to some people thinking about the Hyperloop. Again, like I said, hate in the comments, go ahead and try it. At this point, I really don't care anymore. You can go ahead and try it. I'm just going to debunk you right there and right then. There's nothing you can really pretty much bring at this point. There's no facts you can bring because you don't have your thing working. It's not working. It's not going to work. It will work scientifically. Will it be in uh, somewhere in a city? Nah. Probably not. Like again, ne never say never, but probably not. Okay? And just gonna, it's going to be years and years and years of being able to develop uh, Hyperloop, because believe me, if they had to break it uh, to slow down the magnetic sled with sand, <laughs> you got a long way to go. So leave your comments below, leave your thoughts below. Uh, also be sure to subscribe to the High Speed Rail America Club if you want to see more videos like this. This one went a little bit longer because, of course, we do have a, a lot of material to talk over with the Hyperloop, and I'm probably not going to bring it up that much more uh, as well either. If I'm going to bring it up, I just bring it up, give as much as I can on my mind about it, give as much as I see on the news about it, and leave it right there because it's it's a little bit tiring to repeat the same thing over and over when I can very really put it up on here online, put my thoughts and things online rather than messaging people back and forth on Facebook and everywhere else and on email saying, oh, what do you think about the Hyperloop? What do you think about the Hyperloop? And I'm repeating the same thing over and over. I'm just going to say, I already said it. Here's my video. There we go. All right. So again, leave your comments here and below. If you want to subscribe to the High Speed Rail America Club, be sure to click subscribe. And also, if you want to join us on Facebook, we have the largest, most active High Speed Rail group on Facebook. Be sure to join us. We have the link below also too as well. We'll see you soon. On Wednesday, we're going to have a Fast News episode also coming back as well. And every Friday, we're going to be doing Fast Forward also as well. So this is our new thing that's going to be going on every Monday it's a vlogging style, off the rails video where we're giving our thoughts. Alright guys, we'll see you soon.